Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we're going to do a real-time painting of this chameleon while I answer all your questions from our Q&A post, so stick around. I recently posted a Q&A both on my Instagram page and on the community tab here on YouTube, asking for any and all questions you have about anything at all, whether about me as a person or about the channel, about YouTube, about my personal life, whatever you guys wanted. And you came through with because of the length of this video, I'm not going to answer all the questions in this video. Some of them I answered directly in the comments, and some of them I might save for a future video. So I'm going to answer as many as I can in this video while you see a real-time version of me painting this chameleon in my Handbook Journal Co. sketchbook with very thin, weak paper, but for some reason it loves gouache and acrylic gouache. I'm making this painting with Turner Acrylic Gouache. If you want to follow along, you absolutely can. I did a very simple sketch with red pencil on top of a flat green background that I mixed just using Viridian and white. And then I dove right in after I made that very simple sketch. So feel free to follow along based on this close up of the sketch. I did cut out my mixing time and the time of me, you know, splooping my paint out onto the palette. Since it's out of this close up frame, I didn't think you'd get anything out of those pauses. So I tried to cut those out or speed them up as best I could. So feel free to grab your sketchbook and your paints and paint along while I answer your questions. So the first question, which is the one I got the most, so I wanted to make sure I answered it right up front. I got it from Pal Mommy or P-A-L Mommy on Instagram. I also got a version of it from Beth Williams, who's an old favorite on this channel, love her so much, and Willow Rose Arlen, all wonderful, beautiful subscribers who have been longtime commenters, and I really enjoy seeing their comments. And they all asked some version of the same great question, which is essentially, when did you start getting into art? What is your art journey? What was the reason you got into it? And how did you end up making a YouTube channel about it? So this is actually a really fun question for me because I didn't get into it in a very, what I would consider common way or normal way, the usual way. I wasn't into visual arts that much as a child. I really loved painting when I was eight. And then I fell out of that and turned just to music for like over a decade. <laughs> and I was extremely into music to the point that I made two different albums. I did get offered a record deal. I'm old people, so that's how it used to happen. You didn't you used to self-publish. It was like you had to go through a company. I got offered a record deal in New York City, and it wasn't until I went through that contract and realized they would own the music and have all control over my creativity, my vision, my music, everything. They could even give my songs that I wrote to someone else to sing that I was like, never mind, I'd actually rather do something completely different. So that's what I did. But in that first year of college, I was going to school for music, for music business, and I met a bunch of fine artists, a bunch of visual artists, and I actually shared a suite with them in college. And they were the most wonderful friends. It was so much fun. It, we were so like goofy and just had the most amazing time ever. I still laugh about some of the things we were laughing about. Like literally we're talking about we would just put on a bikini and run down the hall and back hysterically laughing, falling, tripping, thinking that was so risque to run down the <laughs> stinking dorm hall in a bikini. And we just had, that's the kind of stuff. We were just having the best time ever. So there were a lot of visual artists in that suite with me and I would see them doing their homework. And I just got interested and I was like, well, what's this assignment? What's this assignment? And they would explain it to me and then I would start to just try to do it. It just looked fun. And that is where I got really into art to the point that I later minored in art and I really loved life drawing. I was mostly into charcoal drawings of human faces, basically figure, figurative art. Very different from what I do now. <laughs> And so that's what got me into art, and that's what started my art journey. When I got into my official career, which was not art-related, um, I really dropped it because I didn't have any time. I was so focused on my career that I just didn't make any time for art, which was a big mistake. I think if I'd made time for art, I would have processed how busy I was in my career better, and I would have handled it better and been more relaxed and happier. But I just didn't know that at the time and dove right in with both feet and really dropped art. And then the 2020 pandemic happened and I had all of this free time all of a sudden that I hadn't had for, you know, 15 years. And I decided to try my hand back at art. And it was really the Bujo community, the bullet journal community that got me back into art. I dipped my toe. I realized I still was able to see the way you see as an artist is really what I think makes you able to do it. And I realized I still had the observational skills that I had developed in college all those years ago. And so I just got right into it, started making art every single day, 
eventually was like torturing my husband with having to see every single sketch I made. I was doing sketchbook tours literally with my husband who is not into art at all. He is into music just like I am but not art and he loves my art and everything but he's it's not like he's gonna know what I mean when I say do you think I got the composition right? Is it too heavy in the center? Is there enough happening on the right or left? Are the thirds the rule of thirds being followed here? You know what I mean? Are my values off? He doesn't know what I'm talking about. He knows like oh that's cute that's not that cute. Those colors are nice those colors aren't that nice which is super helpful. But I was like really looking for people to talk to about it the way I had that in college with my roommates. And that's what made me want to start the YouTube channel. I love art YouTube. I love watching other art YouTubers. And I was like, well, if I put my stuff out there, yes, it's scary because you might get mean comments or trolls or something. And even though that's pretty rare in the art YouTube community, it definitely exists. But it was worth it to me to try to find my people. And man, have I found my people. I love my little art community that I have here. I could list and list and list, but I'll probably just put a list of acts in the description of all the people that I love and follow. But I also did my 600 days of art video. And I talked a lot about the people who influenced me in that video too. So you can watch that if you want more detail about this issue. So that's the answer to the first question. It's the longest one. And it was really a combination of three or four different questions. So I hope that answered that one fully and that you enjoyed it. Next, I got some really fun animal related questions on Instagram from Starflakes84 and Anna Downia. And Anna, I hope that's how you say it. I've only ever seen your name written down. And I see it all the time. You guys are so sweet. <laughs> You're so nice to me. Um, and the questions were, what are your favorite animals to draw? And if you could be any animal, what would it be and why? Great questions. I think y'all know if you've watched, let's say, you know, 50% of the 70 plus videos I have on here right now as of the time of this video, you probably know the top ones you're gonna see over and over are owls, koalas, and bunnies. Those are the top three. I really, if I could only pick one, it would be owls. That's definitely the one I paint and draw the most. And it's definitely my favorite to paint and draw because they're so floofy and funny and their eyes are so cute and expressive and you can just do a bunch with them. Um, but that's, I really wouldn't want to have to pick one. So let's just say those are the three, koalas, bunnies, and owls. As far as what I would be, if I could be any animal, what would it be and why? I love this question. I actually ask this question a lot in interviews if we're hiring people and I just think it's so telling, but I've never had to answer it myself. So it was a really fun, um, fun experience to do that. And I just thought about like, what would I want to do with my life? Like with my time, if I was an animal and I live in the mountains, I live in Colorado. And I thought about that and I was like, you know what? A mountain goat has it pretty darn good. Mountain goats are so cool. I have zero balance as a human. <laughs> fall constantly. I've like cracked my ankle so many times. I've broken my ankle a billion times, sprained the other one. I have no balance. Um, so when I see mountain goats and they can just stand on a, what looks like a flat wall and they're just chilling, hanging out, standing on a wall, they can just scale anything. They have no fear. Their balance is amazing. They are not afraid of heights. They can do anything and really enjoy the mountains the way I would like only dream of enjoying. That just looks really fun. So even though they're not as cute, except when they're really little babies, I think they're super majestic and fun and their lives look like fun. So that's how I made that decision. I'd be a mountain goat. So that's my answer. I'd love for you all to answer that question in the comments. Of all these Q&A questions, I'd love to see your answers for yourselves, but that's the number one that would be just so cool to see what your answers are. Sort of related to those questions was one on Instagram from Kivi211, again, I hope I'm saying that right, which was, how do you find inspiration for your cute paintings? This is one of the reasons that I chose creating cute art as the channel because I do portraits, I do landscapes, I do animals. I don't love doing botanicals because I really stink at them, but I love looking at botanical paintings. I'm just not good at them. But cute animals was the way I went when I thought to myself, well, what could I do every day and just never get bored and never get sick of it? And it was making cute, funny, just adorable animals. I love looking at the result. I cannot stop staring at it. I love to see something that I made that I can giggle at. It makes me very joyful and happy. And that's what I was like, oh, if I'm going to do a channel, that's what I want to do it about. And how do I find the inspiration to do it? So easily. Number one, my dog, obviously. Cutest. Okay. Can we get on the same page? This is the cutest dog in the history of time. I know we all think our dogs are the cutest dogs ever in the history of time, but I'm pretty sure I'm just the one who happens to be right about that. <laughs> We actually don't have to compete with how cute our dogs are. The way I feel about it is literally every dog I've ever seen in my life has been cute to me. So that's just how it is. So my dog is a huge source of inspiration. I see how cute he is. I take pictures. My husband jokes that every single animal I've ever painted for the channel is my dog Tuffy, but in some other animal form. Like if I make a cute owl, he goes, oh, Tuffy, but an owl. If I make a koala, oh, Tuffy, but as a koala. <laughs> That's what he always says. I wonder if you see it too when I'm showing you these pictures, if you see that when you see my cute animals. I certainly don't see it in this 
chameleon, but you know, let me know. Um, so my dog's number one source of inspiration. The other source of inspiration that I get a lot is if I just decide what animal haven't I painted or drawn yet, and then I'll just look on Pexels or Pixabay for that animal. And if I see one that's cute, that's what I paint. It makes it so easy and straightforward, and it really eliminates a huge barrier to entry for making art, which is what do I do? What do I paint? What do I draw? If I know I can always come back to the touchstone of a cute animal, it makes it very easy to find something to draw. And that actually leads me to the next question, which was from another lovely subscriber on YouTube, Mika Gooden. And I hope I'm saying that right. I love her. She has been so sweet to me. I love hearing about her daughter and her daughter finds my videos funny or she likes the little bunny stories and stuff. So it's just super sweet to talk to her in the comments. And she said, how do you find the time to fill sketchbooks so fast? And the first way is when I see super cute animals I want to paint, then I just look forward to it and I want to do it every day. But the main way I do it so fast is I create art every day and I do a lot of it in my sketchbooks. I mostly do sketchbook pieces. I very rarely do a canvas. I do paint on individual pieces of paper and then hang them in my you know, office slash studio or sell them. But I'm most of the time I am honing my skills and enjoying myself and playing and having fun and just having time of my life in my sketchbooks. And so I use them constantly and that's how they get filled up so fast. I also really try hard not to put so much pressure on myself to make every page beautiful. I did a junky or ugly or cheapo sketchbook tour on here recently of my little five by five handbook journal co sketchbook. And that's what I mean. A lot of comments were appreciative that I was showing pages where it's just scribbly and it's ugly and it's not perfect because sometimes you see just the perfect sketchbooks on YouTube and think literally every page is like that and if yours aren't then why bother it's intimidating don't take your stuff out because you're not gonna you're too intimidated what if your end result isn't that beautiful and I really don't do that if my end result isn't that beautiful then I won't post it on Instagram necessarily but it will be in my sketchbook tour and it will have helped me in some way I will have learned something from that those are the main keys of how I fill them so fast is I make art every day and I make my sketchbook a fun, low pressure place to enjoy myself. And that's a hard thing to do, especially with a YouTube channel. But you all honestly are what makes it that much easier to get positive feedback, even on the ugly pages and appreciation for showing the ugly pages just makes me want to feel more free to make the ugly pages and not worry about it. Obviously, it's not my goal to make an ugly page, but if it happens, I don't want to beat myself up and say, well, then forget this. I'm not even painting tomorrow. No, I'm going to paint tomorrow and it'll probably be better. And that's what ends up happening. That actually leads to a question by love of my life, Moni DeMajor, and I am obsessed with her. She's here on YouTube. I've been a fan of hers since way before I had my own YouTube channel. We share a lot of love, just like Sketches and Scrubs, and I share a lot of love. A lot of us here on YouTube share a lot of love. I'll flash some other names on the screen for you because these are repeat visitors to my channel, and I'm a repeat visitor to their channel, and they're all glorious and wonderful. So Moni left me a comment saying, how do you find the time and energy for art and recording when you have a job and a partner? And that's a really good question because I think that can be intimidating and people can think, well, I just won't be able to do it. I don't have time. This is a real time video of me making a piece in my sketchbook. I originally had 27 minutes of footage and I cut it down to 23 minutes. This is how I do it because I don't spend as much time as most artists do in my experience. I think a lot of artists spend a ton of time and they make their art perfect and perfect and perfect and beautiful and beautiful and beautiful and it's impossibly detailed and it you're seeing my technique is literally I smush paint down. I use the brush and my brush choice as my main way of saying how am I going to make texture and make this interesting and I use my choice of how much paint to pick up on that brush also as how am I going to make interesting marks and make this interesting to look at without having to do like pointillism. Do you know what I mean? I don't have to sit there and do a crazy level of detail. It's not my art style. And I think it would discourage me. If I went to that level of detail, it would probably discourage me. When I used to do um, portraits in charcoal, it would be a three to four day process. And when I make art now, it's under two hours every time, but sometimes it's as quick as under half an hour. I'll do the two hour paintings more if I know I'm doing a big video and you know I, I want to make something big or I wanna make something really detailed or it takes a long time to dry between layers, but mostly it takes me about half an hour, under an hour, half an hour to 45 minutes to make my art and that's how I have time for it. And that's why I try to make time for it every day. And on the days that I don't have time to paint, I can still draw 
And even if it's 30 seconds and I do a blind contour of self-portrait in the bathroom mirror right before I go to bed with a Crayola super tip, that's what I will do. And that counts as my drawing for that day. And I was able to do it. And I never have an excuse not to do at least that. And honestly, it does help. It helps keep me in that pattern of I make art every single flipping day, no matter what happens. The other thing that helps with that is that my partner, my husband, is himself an artist in a way. He's a drummer. And so when he goes down to practice his drums, I'm in my studio doing my painting and then we're both having fun and we're both developing our skills without feeling like we're neglecting each other. We just coordinate our schedules that way and it really works out well. So it's not so much that he would have to be into drums for that to work, but it's like whatever your partner is into that you're not really into, a great way to let them flourish and enjoy themselves is that's the time that they're doing that, that you're not really into it. Like you're not going to do the video games or you're not a runner, so you're not going for a run with you go do your art. So that's another way that it works really well for me. The next question, which definitely ties well into Moni's question, was from Stacy S here on the community tab on YouTube. And Stacy asked, how do you know when a painting is done? Such a cool question. I'm actually very interested to hear how any of my artist friends out there would answer that question because I could see that being very different for everyone. For me, I literally know a painting is done when I look at it and go, oh, I know a painting's done when it's cute, when it is super cute. If we're talking about an animal, that's how I know it's done. Um, but mostly if it's like a landscape or something, I look at it and I keep working on it until I really like it. This is what makes it hard when you're in an early stage of a painting. You don't have a background in, you don't have you know, enough of a value shift in there, you don't have enough darks and lights in there, and I start to really like it early and I have to push past that because I know some of those tick boxes aren't done yet. I try to wait until I have some of those basics down before I judge whether I like it. But once I have a background or I have the color scheme going that I like, I have a good value range, I try to stop messing with it unless I absolutely have to. And my koala bear, I'm sorry, they're not bears, they're marsupials, but I still call them koala bears. The canvas painting with the no fear title, that's the, probably the best example of how I make those kinds of decisions because I liked a flat background. I got my values in on the koala. Koala bear started looking real cute and I still needed to put in some value shift on the limbs in the background before I really liked it. So that's how I know when I'm a done. There were a lot of questions about my favorite part of having a YouTube channel or what made me want to have a YouTube channel. What are my favorite YouTube related experiences so far? That one was also from Willow Rose Arlen, uh, that last wording. And I really like that wording in particular, but those are all similar concepts. So I did want to answer that question too. My number one favorite and surprising experience from having a YouTube channel that makes it really wonderful is when people comment about something I didn't actually like or I didn't see any value in like an ugly page in my sketchbook and it's their favorite or something that I was really risking putting it out there and felt like people are going to hate this they're really going to leave me horrible comments about this it's not quote good enough end quote right for YouTube for public consumption and those are the ones where people are like oh my gosh I'm obsessed with this I ordered a sticker on Redbubble I can't wait to have it I got a print I blah 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 like these are the ones that people love that's to me one of the best parts because that is the thing that you can't get on your own just doing art in your studio is an outside perspective so it's that outside perspective and also the cheerleading we all give each other the encouragement we all give each other I love being on Instagram too for that reason because then I get to see your art even if you don't have a channel and I love it. It's so much fun. So that's my favorite part about having a YouTube channel and my favorite YouTube related experience. I was also asked by Tyler A if it is hard or daunting to come up with new art topics twice a week every single week. And it is not yet. I don't know if it will be one day. When I first started the channel, I was doing videos constantly. I was doing videos like numerous, 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 and numerous, numerous, numerous times a week. And I actually was nervous to cut it back to two times a week. And I did a couple of community posts about it. And I really got nervous about should I do Tuesday, Friday? Should I do Wednesday, Saturday? It has to have a certain split. There has to be a certain number of days in between. It has to be on the days that I know people watch it the most. And I eventually completely abandoned that and ended up just doing Friday, Sunday, and eventually I might just do Sunday. Sunday seems to be the day I get the most interaction, which is my favorite part. 
and I like to do a premiere and hang out in the comments and that'll be fine but it's not it has not been a matter of I'm cutting back because I'm out of ideas I cut back because I didn't I had so many ideas but I started having to record them in advance and just dole them out on a normalized schedule because one day I will go on a vacation one day I will not you know, God forbid but I might get sick I might have events I might not be able to post and I don't want everyone to be so disappointed and if I just have two videos to record a week I can have a backlog and probably still have the two a week come out but at the worst case I would still be able to do my Sunday videos so it's not for me yet hard or daunting because I like to do all kinds of videos I like to do paint alongs and I'm always painting so all I have to do is take out my camera and talk to you guys and talk to you all about what I'm thinking or a story or something fun and some of those videos don't do nearly as well but I enjoy making them and I don't actually make decisions about what to make for you guys based totally on I bet this will get a lot of views or this will be a popular video I really don't do that my point with making videos is more I would like to do what I'd like to do and by doing that I'll find my people I'll find my community that likes what I like too and it's a big enough world out there and YouTube has billions of people using it literally b -b -b billions I better be able to find my people out of all those people <laughs> so I make videos that I feel like I would enjoy watching and those are the ones I put out and sometimes they're really popular and I'm surprised by which ones are popular and sometimes they're not and it's all fine I just keep putting out my videos and I love the comments and I get great comments on the videos that I have with 100 views just like I get great comments on the videos that I have with 10,000 views and I just keep on making my videos and I think that's why I don't feel daunted I think I would feel really daunted and really nervous and it would be really hard if I had to do like a marketing analysis and figure out what would be popular and what tags to use I just don't do that I'm not doing this for that reason so I don't have to worry about it it would be a lot harder if I were doing this as like a business if I were doing this as you know I need to grow this channel aggressively and I'm just not doing that <laughs> I just like to find my people and every time I get a new subscriber literally one I get real excited because I think to myself this person gets me this person might be one of my people I found one out of nowhere and that's really how it's been so that's one of the reasons I probably love these comments so much because that's what it's about for me my next question from Kylie Welsh and I think that's how you say it but it could be Siley Welch it could be Kylie Welch I'm just gonna say Kylie love her she's been super sweet to me too again one of my peeps one of my people she said what's the best water to gouache ratio such a good question I'm actually going to link Alina Revo video below which is the one that I learned from because I'm not gonna be able to do a better job than she did she's phenomenal so I'll link that below for you to watch that's how I would explain it literally exactly what she does she's got it down um, and then another question that I got was how do you mix greens and browns with gouache from Stacy? also I think that's a whole video <laughs> I think I gotta wait and do that as a whole video it is a whole topic it's such a good question uh, so we'll just do another gouache video I'll make a gouache painting and go over a bunch of techniques in that painting I think that'll be a good way to do it I hope that you enjoyed this video I know it was kind of goofy and silly but I had a great time making it I had a great time making this painting and answering your questions I love you guys I love interacting with you you're the best if you have more questions and I did not answer them today, just leave them below and I can always make a follow-up video another time. If you liked the video, remember to leave a like, check if you're subscribed. If you're not, I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel for more art fun. Until next time, remember, create something cute. <laughs>